Let's start with a plain acknowledgement that I'm sure most of you would nod your head and say, yeah, I've, I've had that happen. And that is, if you have an ongoing relationship with a narcissist, you're also going to bump into their anger, just plain and simple. Uh, they, they just can't stop themselves. Let's keep in mind that narcissism is a pattern on a spectrum and it, it, it implies they have an, a high need to be in control and low levels of empathy. They have an attitude of entitlement. They're very thin skinned. They can be manipulative. They want to be the special one in the group. And let's also recognize that every one of us can have some, uh, some inclination toward that narcissistic bent. The healthy ones among us, we see it, we acknowledge it, and we, we try to keep it contained. Narcissists, though, they can just run with it to where it becomes a way of life for them. Well, in the same vein, anger can be seen as being a pattern on a spectrum. We all have moments where we want to stand up for ourselves in self-preservation of our worth and our needs and our convictions. Healthy individuals can keep it down on the low end of the spectrum. We, we, need to, we go ahead and stand up for what we need to stand up for, and then we can uh, uh, keep it at that level and be clean and, and appropriate. It's called having good boundaries. Narcissists, though, they tend to run with their anger and it becomes openly aggressive where they can have rages and very inappropriate kind of reactions. Sometimes they can go into deep passive aggressiveness, etc. And it's interesting, the, the pattern of narcissism and, and how far it goes down on the spectrum tends to run very parallel to the pattern of anger and it's uh, running down the far side, uh, far end of the scale. Uh, they, they tend to go hand in hand with each other. Now, today I want to talk about some uh, some uh, common comments that you might make with a narcissist that will bring that anger out. And as I go through these, I have seven that I've identified. There's pl there are plenty more, by the way. But I, I want you to just kind of be aware of uh, when their anger comes out in reaction to these comments. I'm hoping that you understand what's behind that so that you don't get sucked in unnecessarily to their uh, unhealthy games. For example, the, the first uh, co uh, comment that I want us to look at, and that is, it may be that you'll say to that narcissist, you know, you have some serious control issues. <laughs> now, watch that person squirm when you say that. And I find it really interesting that, that, that most narcissists find that to be highly offensive to the point where it charges their anger. You see, the implication is when you tell them they, that they have control issues, they find that to be insulting. Like, I don't want anybody to tell me I have control issues because deep down on the inside, they know that's not a good way to do life. Now, uh, the fact that they're highly controlling and the fact that they uh, are offended by you calling them controlling shows that they have an, ace, an astonishing lack of self-awareness. But, uh, but you can see that, uh, that they don't understand uh, how their control comes across. And, uh, and, and uh, as a result, if you call them out on it, they're just going to be terribly offended. I, I remember one woman, uh, the husband was in my office and he was talking to her uh, and he said that phrase, you, you have some serious control issues. And she, she uh, uh, actually, she um, uh, pointed her finger. Now think about it as a, a fist with a, uh, a finger pointed out. You know, she was just kind of doing this and she uh, spoke to him in a very stern way. And she said, oh no. I am not a controlling person. In fact, I am the least controlling person you have ever met. I'm sitting there thinking, wow, uh, talk about a lack of awareness. But she was offended by that. She wanted to be known as being a pleasant and friendly kind of an individual. So, but just the suggestion uh, of control was all it took to get her off into her place of anger. In other words, very low self-awareness. Or a second uh, common phrase that you might say, and that is, I'd like for you to listen to my perspective. Now, again, that's a very fair thing. And when you have two people in a relationship, there are going to be times when your perspectives are different and uh, turnabout's fair play. You say what you need to say, I'll say what I need to say. Uh, another illustration, I had a woman in my office and she was speaking to her husband who was highly controlling to the point where he ran people off left and right. And she, they were talking about something and she just said, can I just share my perspective? I want you to hear what I have to say. And he looked at her and said, I don't need your perspective. Well, when he said that, I, I, I paused him and I said, well, let's look at something here. And as soon as I said that, he started wagging his finger at me. And he, he just said, don't go there. Don't go there. And I said, well, she has asked to, uh, to have the opportunity to share her perspective. I think that's fair. 
And he just said, <clears throat> don't go there. Don't go there. And it's like uh, the anger and the bitterness that started welling up inside of him toward me as well as toward her indicates that uh, there's there's so much of a, there's such a deep insecurity inside a person like that, that the anger is the cover for their insecurity. It's like, I, I don't know what to do with someone else's perspective. It's too much for my mind to manage. Or how about a third common comment? And that is, it may be that uh, the narcissist has been going on and on about whatever it is they're pontificating about. And then so finally you say, we've already talked about this. And you may say it just kind of like that. That's enough that can trigger the narcissist's anger because they're going to take that as you trying to shut them down or they may take it as you saying you're very dense. And so in, instead of, uh, of saying, wait a minute, if we've already talked about this, I, I guess I need to let you have some space to think things through, right? Is there something else that we need to discuss uh, that's going to be new? They can't do that. Uh, they're very close-minded. They don't want to hear anything other than their own words. And if they just go into the ramble mode, then they want to have the right to do that. They're just going to ramble on and on. So if you say, stop, we've already talked about this. It's like, uh, now you're just going to get an extra dose of it now. How about a fourth common uh, phrase that you might make? And, and this one, I recommend you don't do this, but nonetheless, you, you may have said this, and that is, do you honestly think that I'm that stupid? Have you ever said that? Or have you thought about saying that to the narcissist? When you say that, there's a real high, or think it, there's a real high probability that uh, they've been just pushing their authority on you and letting you know that you don't make any sense whatsoever. <clears throat> and finally, you're fed up with it. And so you make that comment. You think I'm that stupid. They're going to take that as a challenge to their authority. And uh, they're, they're uh, going to think, well, you know what? Uh, since since uh, you're asking me that, actually, I do think you're that stupid because my word is the only one that counts around here, and it it uh, it, it will eventually reveal their anger will will reveal their need to stay in the superior position at all times. That's how they think. That's how they operate. Or how about a fifth one? And that is, uh, let's talk about the last time you made a major blunder. And so what you're wanting to do by making that statement is you're wanting to even the playing field. Uh, you're probably feeling like there's a lot of blame and shame and accusation coming your way. And so it's like, well, as long as we're talking about mistakes, let's talk about yours too. And it's like, oh no, uh, you're not allowed to talk to me. And that's their wall of defensiveness. They have to keep up the veneer of, of the uh, the good person there. Uh, we call it their false self. And so if there's any, anything going wrong, it has to be you. And so if you want to just say, well, I know I make mistakes, but you do too. Their only response is, okay, this is now a contest, game on, and you are going to lose. Nobody gets to talk to me about my mistakes. I get to talk about yours, but uh, that's a different kind of thing. Big double standard there. Or how about a sixth comment? And, and again, I don't recommend you asking this, but here it is. And that is, what's wrong with you anyway? <laughs> Have you ever had a time when that narcissistic person just wouldn't leave well enough alone and finally you just blurt that out? What is wrong with you? Never in the history of humanity has a person given an excellent uh, response to that question. Well, what's wrong with me is I have a lot of insecurity and I'm, I'm trying to uh, make myself sound smarter than I really am. That would be an honest answer. You won't hear that. So when you say what is wrong with you, uh, what you're what you're actually saying is I see you as being a very uninsightful person, which would probably be accurate. Don't you hear? Don't you see how inappropriate you are? And they just interpret that as you're trying to put them in the inferior position and it's not going to uh, lead to any kind of good discussion at all. It's only going to lead to an increased intensity of the argument and you're not going to come out very good on that. Or how about uh, a seventh comment? And that is, I don't know if I can keep doing this. And it may be that you're saying that with a great deal of exasperation and perhaps some truth as well. 
Now, now that's usually going to bring the narcissist anger out because it's like you're trying to say when the relationship might come to a close or at least when the conversation might come to a close. It's like, no, 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 no. I get to decide those kind of things. And so they have to be in charge. It's your way of saying, I I'm ready to find the exit. And, it's, and uh, their response is, well, if anybody finds the, uh, the exit, it's going to be me running away from you because that means I win because you're the, you're the lesser. And they have this twisted kind of logic that goes with it. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? And I'm sure that you could probably add more uh, comments that bring out their anger. And if you want to put some of them in the comment section, I suspect that a whole lot of people would like to see that and see what you've uh, been up against. Now let's go back and understand there is a healthy and clean form of anger. It, it's, it's good to establish your boundaries and your stipulations and uh, let it be known what you will and will not put up with. And you want to try to speak into your self-preservation needs in a clean kind of way. But just understand the, the nature of narcissism is such that they're not able to, uh, to, to do that in a clean way with you. And so uh, they've got an unhealthy uh, self-absorption, which leads to an unhealthy form of anger. I'm hoping that instead of getting swept into their uh, lack of maturity, you can have a clean sense of assertiveness that says, I'm going to stand for who I am and what I believe in. I'm going to uh, establish my boundaries where necessary. And then if you want to be triggered and have the anger, I'm not running into that and I'm not going to go down that ditch with you. Uh, there, there's just going to be a time when it's like, well, nonetheless, I'm standing firm on where I am. And you don't really get caught up in all of the circular arguments that go along with their lack of maturity. So uh, basically, I'm going to do what's fair and appropriate. And if you choose not to, then that means that I'm going to also have to uh, take a lot of uh, thought about the future of our relationship because I'm not going to be close with somebody who just doesn't know how to manage conflict well at all. Uh, so uh, we'll have to just kind of take that question as it comes as well. I do hope that you get good insight and awareness through videos such as this. Uh, if you've not already done so, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button right below and uh, we'll keep you apprised of more videos that come our way. Many times when you hear videos such as this, it stirs up thoughts and questions that you'd like to discuss with a counselor. And if you have someone in your area that you can go to counseling to, I would encourage you to do so. And, and uh, in doing so, uh, help yourself in the growth process. If you don't have someone nearby, we vetted a group that, uh, that can help you online. And right now, online counseling is where it's at. There's so many people that have uh, found benefit from that. So we have a link below that can uh, take you there. In addition, we have links to our library that gets you to our books. We have online workshops and then also our survivingnarcissism.tv website, mydrlescarter.com website, plenty of, uh, of resources there. I'm hoping that you can look more carefully into the way that you manage anger so that uh, your non-narcissistic side can stay intact. And when that narcissist uh, comes in with their unhealthy anger and all the rage that can come along with it, it's like, you know what? I'm not joining in that crazy show. I'm not going to do that. I, I'm, I'm committed to my dignity, my respect and civility. That's how I live. If you choose not to live with me in that way, then I, I need to, I need to move away, uh, and join with people that know how to handle life in a much more clean way. I want you to have steadiness and I want you to have your, your sense of peace.